Hello, and welcome to the WikiLeaks Roundtable number one. My name is Julian Assange, and I am the founder and editor of WikiLeaks. Throughout this series of roundtables, we will be responding to your questions from around the world. This is not just a press conference, this is a people's conference. You can not only submit questions using the Twitter tag WLQuest, but you can also discuss the answers using the hashtag WLDiscuss. There's a reason that we are doing things this way, that we are trying to do things a new way. Over the last four years, I have proposed that journalism needs to become more scientific, that we need to see all the original sources, wherever possible, for news stories that appear, so that all the people and other members of the press can see the truth behind a news story or its falsehoods. But in our communications with you, we have often gone through intermediaries. Usually, our full interview is not available. And that has led to some members of the press who want to suck up to power, manipulating or distorting what we're really trying to say to you. Now, that's a serious business. Let us not forget that some members of the press in the United States have even called for the assassination or kidnapping of my staff. So instead, we're going to put everyone on a level playing field, all members of the press and all members of the public. You will all be equal in your relationship with us. You will all be able to see each other's questions and you'll be able to see our responses. We've never had those moments, and that's why this is an historic time, as we see movements towards a freer press. Now, we may never have a completely free press, but what we may have is something even more valuable, the ability for people to communicate knowledge to each other safely. And that is something different to a press, rather it is something more innate, and it concerns not just the right to speak, but the right to know. And it's the right to know that draws forth others' rights to speak. And by knowing, we can understand how to function and how to set policy and our individual decisions in the world. There have been moments, however, when the press has been freer. If we look to the 1990s for Russia, Yes, this, yes, Russia was in a state of economic collapse. But we saw multiple poles of authority, not just the government and the security services, but the oligarchs. And during a brief period of time, the Russian press was incredibly vibrant and much freer than what we see in the United States or indeed any Western country. Those organizations could create such a site if they cared about it. But it is our experience that at least The Guardian and New York Times do not care so much to protect sources. In fact, for Cablegate, The Guardian and, and New York Times communicated on open phones. They swapped cables over email. The New York Times approached the White House with its list of stories that it was going to publish on the cables one week before publication and campaigned against the alleged source of the cables, Bradley Manning. We also cannot be sure that they would even publish 
the stories that they receive. The New York Times sat on the story about the National Security Agency mass capping Americans for over a year. CBS sat on the story of the torture at Abu Ghraib for months. I have said in passing uh, that there is information about UFOs in Cablegate. And that is true. But these are only small passing references. Most of the material concerns UFO cults and their behavior in recruiting people. For instance, there is a quite a large cable, which we'll try and release in the next few days, concerning uh, the Raelians, uh, a UFO cult uh, which has a strong presence in Canada and was of concern to the US ambassador in Canada. At that time, the Raelians claimed uh, to have cloned uh, an individual. And fantastically, the press all around the world ate this up and turned it into front page stories. This is a good question, but it has a misnomer in it. WikiLeaks is not a covert organization. Of course, we have to protect our sources. That is our job. That is our role. And in that role, we have to protect those people who protect our sources from being spied on. We are also the subject of threats of violence. People associated with this organization have been in Kenya assassinated. Others, like myself, are at risk of being prosecuted for espionage and extradited to the United States. But you're right, we are growing and we are starting more concrete national offices registered in each country. Each country. We already have four, but we hope to expand that until, like, say, Amnesty International, we have a national chapter, chapter in almost every country in the world. But we don't want to be a big and bureaucratic organization. WikiLeaks is an organization that is about the front line of the media, the front line of the rights to freedom of expression. And that means we always have to be at the edge of the envelope. We always have to be pushing abusive organizations, and we can always expect them to be pushing back. This is a good question. But at the moment, because of the financial blockade the illegal financial blockade against us by Visa, MasterCard, Bank of America and other banking institutions. Money is actually the most important. You can help us fundraise. That is something that is quite important to do. You can look for mechanisms to get through and breach that financial blockade. If you go to wikileaks.ch slash support.html you will see several different ways that you can contribute to our cause. Now let's look at the rest of the question. WikiLeaks has a tremendous number of supporters and we are not just an organization anymore. We are the people who are responsible for keeping and protecting an ideal. But that ideal is not just our ideal. It's the ideal of many people and we are a symbol that ideal. While we have, and that ideal has, tremendous support from around the world, by and large that support is not organized. While the opponents of freedom of the press, such as the State Department, are organized, they are in formal 
bureaucratic structures. They all have each other's telephone numbers. They have a hierarchy. They have their own computer systems. They have easy ways of swapping data with each other. So what is most important for you to do is to get together, to not wait for our direction, but rather find similar people. Look on blogs to people that share your views. Look on Twitter to people who speak the same way that you do. Look in your local neighborhood. Join free press organizations where they exist and you will find supporters of WikiLeaks. Get together and you will work out how to produce a campaign because that's what we're involved in. A campaign for the rights of freedom of expression around the world. And that is not just our campaign, that is your campaign. And is the campaign that should be for all people because freedom of expression in the end is something that all people use, not only to impart their views and their needs, but to hear what the world is like and how they can function in it and how a better society can be built. So that is, in fact, the cause of all. And we need you to go out and make it the cause of all. WikiLeaks releases a lot of material. In Cablegate alone, there are over 3,000 volumes of material, 285 million words. Why we have only released a small fraction of that yet, that's still a lot of volumes to go through. Now, in thinking, how do I make that relevant to my readers? What do I look for? Well, look for what is closest to you. Look for what you know about the most. Because what you know the most, other people are not likely to know. So you can find something that is not reported or it is not reported in the same way. And that is something that will draw your readers in and will have an important and local political impact that is not going to occur somewhere else. Okay, that's it. And many thanks uh, for your support. You can discuss the events here using the hashtag WLDiscuss.